All right, you guys, we're still talking about subject and predicate now, but here's the deal. We're talking about imperative sentences, all right? It's a little different because you are the subject, you as in the person reading it, right? But it doesn't say you, go get the paper, you, go get the paper, you, sit down, you, finish your homework, you, do your on, your remote learning stuff, right? Those are commands and it, it's implied that you are the subject, right? They say an imperative sentence, a command, the subject is always you. The subject you is usually not stated in the sentence, but is understood, right? It's not stated, it's implied, right? Take a look at these examples. Look out the window. Is that a complete sentence? Look out the window. What two things do I always say? You need to have in order to have a complete sentence. And you're probably thinking, oh, it's a subject and a predicate, Mr. Terrell. And you're right. You might look at that and say, but where's the subject? Look out the window. I don't see the subject. Guess what? You are the subject. The command is telling you to do that. Therefore, there is a subject. See if it looks windy outside. See if it looks windy outside. Is that a complete sentence? You might be thinking to yourself, well, you need a subject and a predicate. I don't know what the subject is. You are the subject. Okay, so in commands or imperative sentences, you are the subject. So here's what they're having us do. Let's take a look. For one through four, they want you to tell me, they want to, oh, I'm almost right on my screen with a real pen again. Mr. T, they want you to write down what subject is? Is it going to be you? Is it implied that they're, are they talking to you? Are they giving you a command or is there an actual subject? Look at the first one. It says rain is starting to fall. Well, I can break that down. Rain subject. What about it? Predicate starting to fall. So rain is the subject. Please wear a raincoat. You might stare at that for a minute and think, I don't, I don't see a subject. I'm a little confused, but it gives a command. Please wear a raincoat. Who are they talking to? They're talking to you. So you might say you slash me. I don't know how you want to put it. All right, do three and four, and then you're going to work on five, and I don't know. Let me look at this. Five and six and seven and eight, okay? So I will show you an example on how to do five. Six. Write four commands that you might hear from a teacher. Oh my, you guys can have some fun with this, right? From Mr. T, we'll say, all right, write the understood subject of each sentence on the line. The understood subject, right? The implied subject, when, you're, if, when you read a command is who? It is you, right? Or me, right? If, I don't know how you want to look. All right, so what is something Mr. T might command you guys to do. Hmm. Let's see. Get your homework done at home. Exclamation point. And if I say, get your homework done at home, is that a complete sentence? Yeah. You might say to yourself, but where's the subject, Mr. T? Well, you are the subject. I am giving that command to you, and therefore, it is a complete sentence. All right, you come up with four really good ones. Have some fun with this, all right? And then you're going to take a photo of it, and you're going to turn it in. You know the drill, and I'll tell you, everybody knows how to do this. Um, so I'm going to need you guys to listen. This is easy money here. Do the work, turn it in, get your points. Everybody's happy. I don't want to call your parents. They're working. You know what I mean? They're trying to do, get the work done. Okay? Mom and dad, grandpa, grandma, aunt, uncles, they don't want to hear from old Mr. T saying, oh, you know, your kids, you know, they're not doing it. Do the work. It's easy. And this one's fun. You can pretend to be Mr. T. What are some things that I might command you to do? And then who is the subject? The well, subject is you. All right, Mr. T, out.